Hello, guys, and uh, welcome to another edition of the Wild Industry Personality Profile Series. Um, this is a program that seeks to get a bit more information to up and coming professionals, those who are in the field, where they will get to understand the guys who we believe are making changes in the industry. Today, our guest is Mr. Chasamwa, he's a mineral processing engineer. And he's currently the general manager of Asanko Gold. He's seen a lot and he's done a lot through the, his practice in the industry. And uh, we're definitely going to learn a lot from him today. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much. You are most welcome. Um, as it is usual, we want you to tell us a little about your background and how did you get interested in the mining industry in the first place? Thank you very much. Like you have said, my name is Charles Amor. Uh, Born 25th December 1963. I come from uh, the Asante region, the precise Atlantic uh, field, about 11 kilometers away from Mbosi. I had my primary and middle school education both in Mbosi, Atlantic uh, field, room, and then uh, Accra, where I continued both in the Secondary school for the O level and A levels. I graduated with a bachelor's in uh, mineral engineering from Kane University, now Kane University. Proceeded with a master's program in the University of Mines and Technology. So that is who I am. I got interested in mining, uh, ostensibly because of where we, I come from. Uh, I can't remember when we were kids. Our house was very close to the then TTP in Obasi, for polar treatment plant. You wake up, you hear the noise of the ball. You go to sleep, you hear the noise of the ball. <laughs> you walk from the house to the railway station. You walk under the conveyor belt. Yeah. You see the milk turning. <laughs> you wake up in the morning, you see people dressed with all their attire in black, yeah. with some helmet and lights on top of their head. We didn't know exactly what was going on, <laughs> but all we know was that they were miners they gone to a place we call underground. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, so right from the very onset, we more or less was, were rolled into an activity we call mining. Yeah. So immediately after the sixth form, uh, Obviously, in those times there were not much parental guidance, yes, sure. so automatically we opted to do any related mining uh, courses. So eventually, I ended up with the mineral engineering. So, right from one set, mining and these affiliated programs were in our. Yes, Charles, uh, were you looking at coming this far? I mean, back then, I mean, they did this as students who didn't accept it into a program completed. If started job, did you look at coming this far? Yes, you know, um, normally when you start a journey, you at times might not know whether there are curves, whether there are hills, yeah. whether there are rough roads, but as you con continue, then these challenges come and then you solve one, then it gives you the confidence and then you go ahead and it comes again, then, uh, then eventually you then get a clearer view and an understanding of what the journey entails. So when we started, you know, traditionally uh, we were told that uh, to become a general manager you have to be a mining engineer, that was the initial uh, thinking in the industry, yes. and as, as you understand. Because uh, during that period, if you're a mining engineer, we were told that you do all the disciplines that uh, involve mining. So eventually, you become a you can become a, man, a general manager. But if you do the other subjects like uh, mineral engineering or geology or other aspects, so when we started up, that was the initial thinking. Then I remember. A general manager came on the mine and I asked about the background and I was told he's a metallurgist. I said, oh, okay. So if you're a metallurgist, now you can also become a general manager. 
Then I saw also a geologist also becoming a general manager. So then my thinking then changed. I said, okay, so if you don't necessarily need to be a mining engineer to become a general manager, then I will change my focus now. So I changed and then I went towards that uh, ambition and here I am now. Um, going back again, you, you've, you've worked a lot in the middle of plant as you put it. And I remember back then in Japan where you were the plant manager. But also, uh, I've seen a metallurgist as a general manager before. But look, I, I will want to believe this is your most important highlight for me as a Ghanaian metallurgist a general manager. I can go on, I mean there's a lot I can say looking back from 2003-2004 to date. Can you at least share about three of your most important analysis? Okay, hey, thank you very much. Uh, look at the period that I joined the mining industry, uh, right up until when I, I must say I achieve what I'm achieving now. Yeah. Uh, have not been so smooth. Uh, it actually called for a lot of uh, sacrifices and give and take, uh, and not listening to what people would say is the right way. The reason why I'm saying that is, uh, you know, in the mining industry, it's uh, always one plus one will not always be equal to two. So you need to understand that. Uh, I've come this far um, just because I, I, I understood the principles, I understood the mechanism that surrounds um, running an entity we call mine. Because uh, you might think differently when you are outside the mine industry. Yeah. That thinking cannot be um, catapulted into the mining industry. It doesn't work like that at all. The reason I'm saying that is uh, you would think that uh, there's a promotion you are due for, yeah. and you sit down there, and then somebody is brought down. Then you start asking questions. Yeah. I've I worked here for this number of years, I've been doing that, I've been doing that, but I wasn't given that position. Yeah. I passed through all those, but at any point in time, then I Pause back and ask, what is it that I like that I was not given the, that position, given that I am due for that position? Yeah. So then I kept probing. So I've done a lot of probing. When I probed, then I realized that technically you might be good, yeah. but there are other aspects that you need to develop. So I appeal myself, develop through the pipeline and until I became mature, then I am what I am. In all this, what has been your motivation? What has really been inspiring you that much? Okay, uh, you know, given my background, my, my religious background, uh, I would say my motivation has been from two angles, from the spiritual point, and then from the, I would say, the physical point. The spiritual point, let me take that I'm a Christian, yeah. so I believe that I can do all things through Christ. Number one, and that I also know that all things work good for me. So anytime I'm doing, I say it will work good for me. Yeah. So that aspect is inbuilt in me. So that motivates me from the spiritual aspect. Then the, and the, and the physical, I strongly believe, and I will recommend to people who've been listening and watching me yeah. that uh, you will not know everything by yourself. You yeah. will always in the industry for you to grow will require a mentor. So the motivation that I have is that I choose mentors who have already made it. If you want to go into a specific profession, you look out for people who have been successful in that profession and then you do the same line that they took. And at the end of the day you try or strive to be better than 
what they achieve. Yeah. So the, these are the two things which have actually inspired me from the spiritual point and then from the physical, from the people that I align myself with. So that uh, once I've got to know that they were able to achieve, then means I will also be able to achieve. So this is what I've actually done. That tells me you've been incredibly productive over the years. And I sometimes wonder, actually, as even now, I'm wondering how you can, uh, you've been managing to at least split your time between the task schedule of IGM and also monitoring the other activities. I know your interest is still very much in monitoring what the plans comes out with. How do you manage your time? Thank you very much. Uh, this is a question that I think uh, come to me a million times. Anytime I have uh, people interview me, they do ask at the GM, um, how do you manage your time, given the fact that this project you to get to permitting, yeah. construction, uh, commissioning, ramping up, and then uh, very stable running yeah. and achieving all your targets. Yes, um, I must say, and I think an advice and I will recommend to all upcoming uh, people in the line that uh, you really need a good team before you can achieve such results that uh, a certain goal is achieved. So in selection of your, your help is a little bit that way. You might get people who are very, very, very sincere yeah. and who are um, so I would say prepare to sacrifice a bit yeah, to help you with your vision. You, you must be able to tell them all the deliverables yeah. and then uh, if there are timelines involved and then uh, you tell them the expectations and you allow them to operate. In, in a sample we have the level of works and it's more predominant in what we call that sample way. So if you are the general manager, you have the work that you do. Yeah. Then the HOD has also got its level of work that you do. You know, perfect systems. Yeah. So you don't more or less micromanage him. You yeah. are making him responsible and then accountable for his actions and inactions. So once you know that I must, for instance, you take the plant, the process manager knows I must deliver A, B, C. As the agreed KPIs for the year. Yeah. You allow him the room to operate. Then you hold him accountable and responsible if he's not achieving that. So, with that, those principles, everyone knows what he's required to do. Yeah. Uh, he knows if he doesn't meet his KPIs, what is in, is in store for him. So, this has been some of the strategies we have used to achieve what we are, we are going to achieve. Um, we are having a close and personal chat with such as someone who is a GM, a central goal. Um, Charles believes that as professionals, we need to be prepared to solve problems along our journey. We also have to be steadfast and focused on the dreams of achieving success in the industry. We also need to understand the mechanisms that surround mining in general. And he also believes we need to develop other qualities apart from our professional uh, competency. And then we, we have to be bold in mentorships. And at the end of the day, we all have to be involved in teamwork. And Charles, um, the state of the industry over the years, have standards changed? And how can we quantify it? Are we getting there? compared to the other mining hubs? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Look, I must say that standards has actually changed. Um, are we getting there? In the mining industry. And I will say we are getting there. And I will quantify it and uh, give you specific examples as to the reason why I'm saying that. Uh, way back in the late 80s and early 90s, when we were students, and, uh, we got an opportunity to go on attachment. And you look at how operations were conducted, yeah. right from mining through to the plant 
and all the other services uh, departments. If you look at the way things were done manually, uh, even I remember when I went to one of the mine, uh, an attachment, and they were doing uh, all the marcation, you know, the geologists were busy using rulers and set square and what have you, and actually marking it um, on the table. Uh, we were students, so we, uh, and, and that, to us it was uh, excellent and it was good. But that was the first time we were being exposed to such a uh, way of drawing polygons and, and it's not a software. I mean, yeah. the guys were. Yeah. And then we went to the plant, and then you see the met, met accountant with calculator <laughs> and uh, calculating recoveries. You know, then we compare it with now yeah. that the mining engineer or planner will just sit behind his computer with software, and, and it increases confidence and yeah. it increases uh, uh, accuracy. You come to the plant now. We're talking of not the recoveries in the 80s compared to previously. Yeah. Now we have plants in Ghana here that can achieve 97% recovery of gold. So if you plot even that from the 80s percent recoveries, now some plants are able to achieve 90% recovery. What it means is marginal grades can now even be mined. Yeah. Now technology has also come improved. Uh, grades that previously were not uh, economical to process. But technology was not advanced, but currently with technology on the market, now they are all marketable. So I must say, yes, the money industry has actually uh, moved forward with technological advancement. Um, to, as a follow up, what do you think is really lacking in the industry now? Okay. Uh, in terms of um, professionalism? Look, professionalism, in my opinion, what is lacking now, which once again, I would say I would recommend that uh, we take it seriously the, uh, on the manpower side. Yeah. Uh, every industry, especially on the mining side, is built on what I would term three-legged port. If you take the African port, that uh, if I am permitted to speak a little tree, it's a cuckoo, it has got three legs. So if you put that one to the mine industry, one of the legs will be the resource we have on the ground, the other leg will be the funds or the money we use to develop, yeah. and then the last one will be the manpower. Resource in the ground is there. Yes. Money, you can walk to the bank and you can get the money on the agreed rate. Yeah. Now, it's on the manpower side, which in my opinion we must develop. And we must develop with the, with, the, with the technology and with the thinking that is aligned to the industry practices. So that uh, once you're able to identify the resource, you are able to get funds, the only thing that can fail you will be the manpower. So if you don't have manpower that has got a professional uh, uh, attitude, that understand what they are going to work with. So that doesn't become more of theory and theory and theory and theory. So our training must have a fair bit of practicality. And that sent me back to the previous slow mines period. When before you even start year one, you go to the floor, you understand what the stop is, you understand what the mill is. I agree there are challenges now because now I talked of about 100 students in the class. Yeah, the, numbers. the numbers are huge. But I think uh, we in the industry, uh, can meet strategically yes. and then uh, come up with a way of I wouldn't like to have people coming on the mine uh, to work and he hasn't even seen a mill before yeah. he hasn't even uh, seen a shovel before yeah. you understand so yeah. we we in the industry I think we are better I personally am a bit a bit a bit yeah. lots when I have students and I begin to you know, talk to them and it's like, I tell you, I think there's something that we need to fill. There's industry, academia, industry integration, which I think must happen. Then we can close the loop. Yes, we definitely need to have that sort of academia, industry connects. 
and then uh, I was also looking at this uh, straight safety practices, resource nationalism. What, what are your thoughts about this? Uh, are we doing that? Are our approaches right? Look, safety, I must say, is very key in the mining of money operation. Uh, mining is a risk business. There is no mining industry which you can tell me you can just walk in and you can get the gold or the diamond or the manganese or the bauxite out without an inherent risk. So it's the safety uh, practices that you inculcate that is what will make uh, your mind very safe. And in, to me, safety is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, should be a, a way of life. It shouldn't just be a procedural way of just doing things. It's a culture that you must preach on the mind every day. And people shouldn't practice safety only when the supervisor is coming. So it should be a, a culture. And I think uh, the, 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 the sustainable of the industry to me, yeah. currently also, aside the cost and other things, yeah. which more rely on the safety. Because you wouldn't like to mine or explore and then kill people. You want people to come to work, get money, then go back and then enjoy the money with the family. And, and then safety is, to me, the most expensive thing that you should actually sell and people might buy. You should buy safety and make it a work of life. Then the other question was talk, talking about, is it national? No, actually, I'd rather want to even talk about the local content. Yeah. Look, I'm a believer of local content. Yeah. I'm a beneficiary of local content. And I think that, uh, look, Ghana has come of each. And the mining industry has come for each exactly. that uh, we have one of the best investing come to a point where we even export, if you yeah. would like me to do that way, uh, professionals across the group, yeah, to Australia, yes. to Canada, to the Af West Africa, sorry, I don't want you to mention yeah. it, it's like our home now. Yeah. So, uh, in terms of local content, I think. Uh, to me, it's something that we cannot hide because we have got the capable people, we've got capable men, and at some point we believe in local content. And as I speak now, as of my nine head of department, eight are Ghanaians. So we strongly believe in the local content. I think uh, we've come a long way that uh, Ghanaians or Ghana as a country should be proud of itself of having achieved such a stature. 20 years ago, 30 years ago, it wasn't like that. Yes, that, that's true. And now we are black general managers, we are black EVPs, yeah. uh, black engineers, yeah. you know. So I think, uh, and then we shouldn't relent there. We should continue the, 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 the exercise and the uh, programs too. And, and the only concern I have, sorry that I'm believing on this matter, is uh, well, uh, in the middle level class now is a big concern to me. If you visualize the manpower profile in, in the mining industry, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it's like a triangle where the base, I would say, are the students and the graduates and the freshers who are just joining us. Yeah. The base is very broad. Yes. But as you come up, then it, it, it truncates, you know. It, so what we must do in terms of our resource development is to ensure that uh, that triangle which apex at the top yeah. will rather have a plateau, you know yes. what I mean? Yeah. So that we will have a lot of uh, managerials, yeah. a lot of middle management personnel, so that the pipeline of growth will always be full. Otherwise, a time will come when <laughs> the apex will be cut off yeah. And then we didn't have the people to move up. So people must really uh, get themselves mature, mature not in terms of age, in terms of the industry, so that the pipeline always be full, so that one go, then one come. And tell, given the opportunity, what would you want to see being done differently in the industry? 
I mean, from I'm trying to go back, chasing your experiences from way back mm -hmm. to date. What would you want to see being done differently? Yeah, I think uh, what is being done differently now compared to uh, the previously is that uh, now we give opportunities to uh, people who prove the ability to, 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 to do the work. Unlike previously, there were some particular areas on the mining uh, industry where there were lots of people to, to go. But now it's been done differently. For instance, now we have even ladies who are driving the dump trucks. <laughs> we have ladies uh, operating the excavators. <laughs> they need to do the missing no. <laughs> this one is there for me. Yeah, so I think that one has been done differently. And, and the way now we, we, we de risk the mining activity to me is a big plus. Because previously, uh, investors would run away from investing in mining because they think, ah, I'm putting all this money in, what about if the gold is not there? Or if the recovery is not there? But I can tell you now, before even an investor comes in, at least he knows his payback period, he knows how much gold he will get, yeah. at least to a uh, accuracy of about 95%. Yes. So to me, that has the risk, and that's why we have now the low grade deposit all being attacked because the confidence level has increased. So yeah. that to me, I'm very happy because it's been done differently. And there are a lot of other things on the industry which is being done differently from previously. Yeah. Like our cost structure and cost mechanism. Previously, if you take a mine, the mine was more like a, a town where you have the hospital, you have the school, yeah. you have what are you? It's, it's, it's like the town of the mine and the mine of the town. Yeah. But now, the, the, the new cost structure model which come, came up in the late 90s and the early 2000s yeah. says concentrate on the core process yeah. and leave the services to other uh, experts in that yeah. area, like the transport, yeah. the catering, and even some area, the medical facilities uh, are given, then they give them out to yes. these uh, service agents, agencies who are more professional in that area. So I think to me that's also helping the industry a lot because you don't entangle yourself with other services which you, where you don't have the expertise in. Um, now you have the responsibility of looking at both the tonnages and then the power processing as well. How, how do you find it? How challenging is it? You see, uh, look, every objective that you want to achieve is always a challenge. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether you have to move within the, the, the most lightest weight object from point A to point B. It's always a, a, a challenge. Yes. But like I said, once you have a strategy, that you follow. The, the whole thing boils down on strategy. Yeah. That is the most important uh, uh, ingredient or the most important mechanism in our managerial practices. Once you have a strategy, it makes it easier and then become 90% of every challenge that comes. Uh, I'm able to manage all this because uh, the strategy I used to run and which assemble goal we used to run is what we call the uh, uh, Resolving variance from the source. Okay. Resolving, so you don't wait until the variance, it doesn't matter whether in the mining tonnage, yeah. whether in the process tonnage, whether in the cost, uh, 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 cost per ton, you don't wait till the end of the month or the end of the year before you say, ah, yeah, should have done that. You, 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 you tackle it on hour to hour basis, day to day basis week to week, month to month. So once you go to identify a variance in, on an hourly basis, you attack it, you resolve it, so the next hour, you are back on track. So the, the key here is managing variance at the source and timing. Then you, you definitely don't look at on track. You don't wait and relax. And you, you, you have to be involved. <laughs> yeah. You have to be involved.
And we are still having a very exciting closing personal chat with Charles Samuel, the GM of uh, Asanko Gold. And he strongly believes that we need to develop our manpower technically in line with technological trends. He believes we need to also inculcate good safety practices. And then also we need to develop our middle level professionals for um, greater sustainability. Um, Charles, um, what are you hoping to achieve with your current role towards sustainability in the industry? Thank you very much. Uh, I'll still use my famous thread again, Africa Port, the Lex, yeah. to ensure we achieve sustainability in the industry. Like I did indicate earlier, the resource is there. Yeah. Money you can get from the bank. That's true. The important aspect is the manpower, the people. So to for us to sustain the mining industry, we must develop the people. We must develop as for technology. We have people that we have to develop to even do the technology. The resource and the money, let them be the day, I would say, <laughs> and not living to let me put it out here. Yes. So yeah. the, the, the dynamic one is the people aspect. Yeah. So to me, we need to consider manpower development in the mining industry as key. Uh, that is what will sustain the industry. Because the goal is good, the goal is there. Yeah. God has already put the goal there. There's nothing we can do about the goal. But then the industry will be, we say, the definition of sustainable industries when the industry is able to operate uh, within the cost and then achieve its target. The cost, technology, and everything revolves on the manpower. Yes, yes. So if you develop the manpower very well, you can come up with the technology. Yeah. And when technology is proven and it's right, the cost will come down. So, for us to be able to sustain the industry, our, our, our view or our thinking should be to always be within the lowest cost bracket of the only sustaining cost. And then that can only be done when we pay attention to development of human power and incorporate some culture of ownership yeah. you know, in them that this is not for for in quote for government, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Abide them. Yeah. It's for you. And once that attitude um, is inculcated in them, then we are able to sustain. Then we also have to make them very clear. And I always I'm a bit emotional when it comes to this that we should let uh, uh, the, the people that we work with, or those who are struggling to come up, that the altitude we can all reach always depends on our attitude. If you can have the most um, uh, high level technology, you can have, you can turn the sidewalk with your strength, you can mine and carry the whole dump truck. If your attitude, to me, that's something which is key, that, that form a moral fiber of the industry. Exactly. So if the attitude, and remember, my policy is, I hide you not because of your competency alone. I hide you competence plus attitude. Yes, Charles, um, what's the message you want to give to the industry professionals, those who are in and then uh, those who are coming in and from school. Yeah, I think uh, my last statement actually was yes, 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 in yes, attitude yes, and yes, yes, yes. but the second one is the patience. That uh, like I indicated earlier, it's not what you think you deserve, it's what you, you, you should always be giving. Once you are able to get that attitude in you, uh, it will help you a lot. If you think you should be giving this and you are not giving, and you let that one override you, it affects your output. Yeah. 
So you get a clear mind and when you don't get uh, something that you think you deserve, then you ask yourself a question, then you prove yourself. Probably there's something which your superior manager is not seeing. Yes. That why probably is not giving to you. And probably by not doing that is even helping you. Yeah. It's important for you to mature first before you elevate to the second, the, the next level. Then to be elevated prematurely <laughs> and you <work> fail. <laughs> then you get demoted. Uh, that one, I would prefer, I would advise that. Stay where you are. Get mature, get mature, then when you go to the next level, you will enjoy that level. Yeah. So patience is, is very key. And I think uh, my advice to the upcoming youth is uh, we are in, uh, it looks as if we are in uh, an age of uh, uh, what I would term as uh, fast, 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 fast. Yeah. What everything fast, 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 fast. Yes. No. No. Fast, fast, fast can be dangerous. So just exercise patience. Exercise patience. And well, gradually, gradually, you will definitely will get to where you, you want to be. So my, that's my advice to uh, upcoming professionals. Um, uh, at this stage, you really well want to know what. Uh, because I, 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 you, I remember you usually pop in some of our parties and then just go and dance it. Is there anything about you that will interest our viewers? So I know you don't like dancing. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I know about you is that at least you like walking from the restaurant to your. Yeah, that's fine. But what other game can surprise us? I play a lot of tennis. Okay. I play, I play tennis. Uh, I started playing uh, golf. And, uh, oh, cool. I'm, I'm <laughs> handicapped uh, 18. I've got my like, golf clubs in my house. So I'm, I'm thinking of uh, at the point in time I'll get some nine holes built at Asango. Yeah. Uh, at, back at Dama, I started the uh, mm. training. Uh, and I think Golf, yeah. golf. So I played tennis. I used to play football, but now I think I've packed that off for now. Yeah, yeah. So I, tennis, I play. Uh, I play golf, and I like watching football. So that's uh, a bit of my hobby. Yeah. Uh, if I want to take a cool time off my head, I just jump onto the tennis court and then. Uh, Tools of the heat of yeah. <laughs> um, I know we've not seen the best of you yet. What should we look up to? Uh, going forward. Yeah, going forward, I think uh, what I, the legacy I would like to leave is uh, not to have only one chance somewhere, yeah. but to have a lot of better chance somewhere. Yes. That's what I'm actually working towards so that. Uh, when Charles is no more there, they would say, oh, we can't find any more Charles here. Yeah. Let's go over there to go for No. So my aim, and I'm mentoring people yeah. who I hope will follow what uh, advices that I'm giving so that uh, I can one day sit back and say, I did mentor this person, and he has he listened to advice, and now he's where he is. So that's what I'm actually working uh, towards at least to have more of chances in the system. So I'll give me the opportunity uh, to choose another career. We're rolling back the clock way back to after year goals. Would you still have gone in for the drug processing? Yes. Yes, I will still do mineral processing. That's why I've done my MSc in uh, solid mineral engineering. Uh, I think I, I like that profession because I, I excel very well uh, in that field and I think uh, it's a profession I've taken which I, I will never regret and, and I think uh, uh, it has exposed me a lot and I've also contributed a lot to the, to the profession. So if we still go and come back, I will still pursue Metallurgy, you know, being an engineer. Uh, I still, love, I still love, love that profession. 
I'll, I'll still go with mineral engineering, yeah. but with, with the technology that is coming, not to yeah. leave behind yeah. technology yeah. and still be doing the things in the old way, but to flow with the technology yeah. and then enhance uh, my ability. Indeed, uh, we need to establish the culture of ownership in our professionals and then um, good attitude is key. We need to have patience as um, professionals and get matured and really developed to handle such big managerial positions. It's been very insightful and exciting coming away to us. We are so happy and then uh, we want to thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much.